I was born in a little uh, mining town in northern uh, Michigan called uh, Ishpeming. Never heard of the word science, uh, really, in the in the early grades. I moved to California when I was 10 years old, Southern California, and uh, didn't take any science. I was always good in arithmetic, though. I was really at the top of the class always. I didn't take any science even there in my freshman year. I didn't have much of an idea of what it was and the general science course didn't seem very interesting to me. And then I didn't take any science either in my sophomore year. In fact, I was sort of a, a literary major. When I reached the junior year in high school, uh, they told me that uh, if I didn't take a laboratory uh, science course, I wouldn't be eligible to enter the tuition-free State University, which would be UCLA, and so I took chemistry. My uh, chemistry teacher, and later next year physics teacher, just turned me on. I, I just uh, more or less uh, took the attitude, why hadn't anyone told me about this? You ready for me, Dr. Seaborg? Yeah, I'm ready. Great. <laughs> okay. Okay. What do we got today? We got a... a quite a number of items here uh, to go over. Uh, we have a card from the American Nuclear Society regarding their membership uh, directory. Uh, it was the, uh, oh, I don't know, the adventure of science, the, uh, the thrill of discovery, the, the logic of it. I mean, the idea that you could uh, put it all together in certain principles which you couldn't in the other subjects, and uh, make deductions and, and uh, predictions. Um, all of that uh, uh, just, uh, well, just hooked me. And uh, I never uh, had a, 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 a second thought after that. We showed on the night of, 20, of February 23rd, 24th, 1941, uh, that this could be chemically separated and identified, separated from all the other elements, and thus uh, we had discovered the element with the atomic number 94. Uh, here is a picture of me taken at about that time, 1941. I like to show that uh, in order to show how little I've changed uh, during the, the intervening years. We decided to name this new element with the atomic number uh, 94, Plutonium. Uh, uranium had been named after the planet Uranus, and uh, Neptunium after the planet, next planet Neptune, and uh, there was another planet uh, beyond that, Pluto, so we thought we'd use that system and name it uh, Plutonium. Uh, actually, perhaps we should have used the base Plut and named it Plutium, but we like Plut better. That we just like the sound of it. And the symbol, of course, should have been PL. But just as a sort of a joke, we suggested the symbol PU. And uh, we thought that that would be, uh, uh, we would be criticized for, that, for this uh, when the uh, work was finally published after the war. Uh, but uh, nobody said a word. It was uh, in this room that on February 23rd, 24th, 1941, the chemical identification and that uh, corresponds to the discovery of plutonium took place. Uh, my co-workers uh, were Joseph W. Kennedy, Arthur C. Wall, and Edwin M. McMillan. And we worked uh, using this sink here in this chemical identification experiment. After the discovery, which was done with an isotope with the mass number 238, we went on and found the plutonium with the mass number 239, which is the fissionable form. And uh, in March 
of 1941, we demonstrated that it was fissionable with slow neutrons. Uh, this made it eligible uh, with the war on to uh, be the uh, explosive ingredient of an atomic bomb. I've often been asked, you know, uh, did I realize the import of the discovery? And all I can say is that, sure, in a, in a general way, but this was my research. Uh, I was doing it uh, uh, mainly f uh, from the standpoint of increasing uh, uh, knowledge. I didn't stop to ruminate and think, my God, look what I've done. I've changed the history of the world. I knew that it uh, had a potential, uh, a great potential to uh, alter the course of history, but I didn't stop to ruminate about it. As a result of this, the metallurgical laboratory at the University of Chicago was established for the purpose of uh, f devising means of manufacturing and uh, separating plutonium. The famous Enrico Fermi uh, devised the chain reaction, the pile for the production of plutonium, and then I was responsible for the development of the chemical methods for the separation of the plutonium. Uh, one of the things we had to do was to study the chemistry of uh, pure plutonium, isolate it in a pure form. We bombarded with neutrons using cyclotrons as a source of neutrons, large quantities of uranium so that we could produce weighable amounts of plutonium. The uh, uh, vessels in which the reactions were uh, conducted were little capillaries, uh, 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 little glass capillaries, and then the reagents were added uh, and uh, the observations of the precipitates and so forth made by viewing the uh, activities, the chemical processes as they took place. We used these microgram samples to study the chemical properties of uh, plutonium and we made the first weighing of plutonium after it had been isolated following these uh, uh, production reactions uh, of a sample that weighed 2.77 micrograms. At that time, uh, they had not had in one place enough plutonium that one could see even under a microscope. And yet with these exceedingly minute quantities, uh, they were able to work out the, the rough outlines, at least, of a separation process, and one that actually was finally used in the commercial plan. I think that Seaborg, uh, as general head of the work on separation, was another very key figure in this whole uh, array. I went out in uh, June of 1944 to uh, uh, oversee the uh, building of the uh, chemical extraction plants and so forth. And uh, I was just amazed at the magnitude of the operation. There were about 50,000 workers, uh, all living in the sort of Quonset huts in the uh, village of Hanford. But the DuPont people were very careful, very meticulous, and they wouldn't uh, start the plant until I went over the, the so-called specifications, the written uh, instructions uh, to the chemical plant operators step by step. They set down the procedures, described them, and I had to read them, correct them, and then sign my name to every page. And uh, we came up with a precipitation process in which the plutonium would uh, co-precipitate, as uh, uh, we refer to it, with the uh, uh, precipitate bismuth phosphate. Uh, this was uh, uh, a good process because the precipitate was uh, crystalline and could easily be separated and separated by uh, centrifugation. Um, the plutonium was carried, as we say, when it was in its lower oxidation state, along with some fission products. And then we oxidized it to a higher oxidation state and precipitated bismuth phosphate, 
which carried those same fission products with the plutonium remaining in solution. And that way we had a complete separation from all of the fission products, those that came down with the bismuth phosphate and uh, those that uh, did not. And of course, we repeated the cycle uh, in the plant that was built at Hanford in order to make a uh, complete separation. It was necessary to separate the fission products um, to an extent of one part in 10 million. And I'm doing a History Day project on the bombing of Hiroshima and the, um, my project really focuses on the positive and the negative effects of nuclear energy. Yeah. And so we're here to talk to you today about the positive and the negative sides and how, how you feel about it. Yeah, well, well there are a lot of uh, positive ramifications. Uh, uh, one was the discovery of the, the radioactive isotopes. Uh, technetium 99M, M stands for metastable, uh, is used about 10 million times a year in the oh, diagnosis goodness. and uh, treatment of uh, disease. And uh, iodine 131 saved my own mother's life. About 40% of the uh, energy and hence the electricity comes from plutonium. I didn't, oh. You mean that's today? Generally not I didn't think, I don't think people realize no, that. that. Well, that's never said. I mean, they don't, uh, they don't want to... Uh, alarm people? Uh, alarm them. They don't want to tell any of the positive uh, aspects. Yeah. Also, the other isotope... We're, we're living in a, a scientific age. Uh, a great deal of uh, modern life revolves around science. We, of course, need uh, scientists and engineers in order to uh, make the discoveries and developments that uh, are necessary in order to compete in a uh, highly technological world. We need a, a general knowledge of science and mathematics, uh, a, a general level of scientific literacy in the general population in order that they might uh, uh, perform uh, adequately uh, in a technological society. I'm somewhat optimistic, but uh, I think there uh, need to be a couple of uh, rather fundamental changes. A change in our educational system, for example, I mean, in the training of teachers. We need to train teachers more in the uh, uh, subject matter, or put it the other way around, make uh, uh, people who get their degrees in scientific subjects, like chemistry and physics and biology and so forth, eligible to teach without having to go through the rigmarole of the methods courses in the schools of education. And then the second point is I think we're going to have to infuse uh, really massive amounts of money and probably federal money into the educational system. I'm talking now, of course, more about the pre-college uh, level uh, in order to pay the teachers so that they're position is uh, economically competitive with what they, uh, for example, a scientist could uh, command in, in a salary in, in other positions. There are a lot of the young people that are turned off in the early grades uh, because the teachers uh, are not uh, conversant in science and not interested in science, and this, uh, this attitude is uh, uh, picked up by the uh, the students. Uh, we have to find ways of uh, interesting uh, uh, minorities uh, in science. I think uh, probably a step that will help in that direction is, uh, is to bring in role models, members of a minority group who have uh, entered the scientific field, some scientific field and uh, done fairly well or done well who go out to inspire uh, others in, in their minority uh, group uh, to uh, enter the field. Uh, these are difficult problems. When we at the uh, Metallurgical Laboratory uh, of the University of Chicago went on to uh, try to synthesize and chemically identify the next two elements, they would be the elements with the atomic numbers 95 and 96. Uh, 